I am 48 and my wife is 47. We have been married for 12 years. When we first met, she worked as a waitress at an all-night diner, but she has always had the dream of working in finance or the banking industry. When we started dating, I told her I would do everything within my power to help make those dreams come true. I am a manager at an automotive shop, and I was making around $48,000 per year, but I helped her out financially with a student loan so she could continue her education in her field. Because she didn't have any money left to pay her bills, I would give her a couple of hundred dollars here and there to make sure she could pay her rent and other bills on time. Over the next couple of years, with a lot of dedication from both of us, she eventually got a job as a finance manager at a local bank. But she did not start as a finance manager. She had to work through a few of the positions at the bank, which in turn made her made her a more well-rounded manager. It was a great position for her and it paid very well. Eventually, she started doing so well that she didn't need my help anymore and was able to pay off all of her student loans. She even offered to help me out financially, but I declined because I didn't need it. As the years went by, her salary kept increasing by leaps and bounds until it grew to well over $100,000 per year, which was way more than what I was making. With both of us making good money, we went on vacations, traveled to different countries, and even took a few of our friends with us on vacation and paid for them to join us. Things were really looking good. By this time, we had been dating for about four years before we got married. She didn't have any kids, but I had one son from a previous relationship who was on his own, so it was just the two of us. Things started to slowly change about a year ago. She became distant, was working longer hours, and was always tired when she got home. I understood, so I tried to take the pressure off of her by cooking and cleaning the house when I got home. I always got home before she did, so I had time to do a little housework before she walked through the door. But it seemed like the more I tried to help out, the more she wanted me to do. She would always find something else that needed to be done, and I started to feel like I was never doing enough. I started to notice that she was spending more money buying new clothes and going out to lunch with her friends more often. I didn't put too much thought into her spending money on clothes, I just figured she wanted to make a good impression on her subordinates and the big boss. As time went on, I really started seeing a slight shift in her behavior. She was more agitated with me and would snap at me for the smallest things, but I just chalked it up to stress from work. Then, about six months ago, she started working even longer hours. She was never home. And when she was home, she was always on her phone or working on her laptop. I asked her what was going on, and she just brushed me off and said she was fine, but I could tell something was wrong. I didn't want to say too much, so I just left her alone, thinking she would come to me when she was ready to talk. Her behavior started to get worse, and she started talking down on me like I was beneath her and even started calling me names. I had never seen this side of her before, and I didn't know how to deal with it, so I just tried to ignore it, thinking she would eventually snap out of it. One day about three months ago, I came home from work, and she was already home and was on the phone yelling at someone. I couldn't hear what she was saying, but I could tell she was angry, so I went to the kitchen to start dinner. After a few minutes, I went back into the living room and told her I was starting dinner. She said she wasn't hungry and was going to bed. I didn't want to argue with her, so I let her go, but couldn't help but wonder what she was so angry about. Fast forward a few days later, and I got a text from my wife as I was driving home saying she would be working late. I replied and said, okay. Her meaning of working late is working until 7 to 8 p.m., but on this night, it was way past 9 p.m., and she wasn't home yet. As a result, I decided to drive up to the bank where she worked, but her car wasn't there. I assumed she had gone to hang out with her friends and didn't say anything to me. She would always tell me she was going to hang out with her friends or co-workers, but she didn't this time. I started to get worried and called her phone, but she didn't answer. I left her a voicemail asking her to call me when she got a chance but she never called back. While I was driving home, I was hoping she would text me or something, but that didn't happen. 
At about 1.30, she came strolling in and went straight to the shower without saying anything to me. At this point, I was angry, and after she got out of the shower, I confronted her and then asked why she didn't tell me she was going somewhere after work and didn't return my calls or text messages. She fired back and said, Look, I was just hanging out with some of my friends and coworkers. Then she said I need to stop trying to control her. I said to her, excuse me, really? I then said, okay, and walked off to sleep in the guest bedroom. The next morning, I went to work without saying anything to her, and she didn't say anything to me the whole day. Throughout the entire day, my wife did not apologize or show any remorse. Her lack of communication with me made me suspicious. I had a feeling something was going on with her, but I couldn't figure out what it was. I decided to do some investigating, but I had to be careful not to let her know. I searched through her belongings while she was away and found some unusual items, such as credit card statements with questionable charges and hotel receipts. However, I didn't have any solid evidence to accuse her of anything. I came across a notebook with a list of names, phone numbers, and dates. At first, I thought it was just a list of her friends, but then I noticed some men's names as well. I called one of the numbers and discovered it was a hotel. When I asked if the person had stayed there, I was told they couldn't disclose that information due to privacy reasons. I also asked if they could confirm if the person had checked out, but they couldn't provide that information either. I couldn't understand why my wife would have a list of men's names and numbers with dates next to them. It was clear to me that she was cheating. I didn't need to ask any more questions. I packed my things and went to stay with a longtime friend. I confided in him and told him what I had found. He said that names and dates weren't enough to prove anything, but I knew something was going on and I needed to find out what it was. After two days of not hearing from my wife, I decided to hire a private investigator. I couldn't keep wondering, and her constant anger when I confronted her about not communicating only solidified my suspicions. On the third day, I contacted a private investigator and provided him with my wife's name, workplace, and some information about her friends. The next day, he called me and asked to meet in person to discuss his findings. He showed me footage of my wife leaving work with some co-workers and going to a fancy restaurant. On one occasion, the investigator noticed my wife texting someone after reaching into her purse. After dinner, everyone left except my wife, who stayed behind and waited in her car. About half an hour later, a car pulled up next to hers and a man got out. They embraced, and it was clear to me that my wife was having an affair. After they embraced and kissed, they got into their vehicles and drove to a hotel that was about 30 minutes away. They got out and walked past the front desk as if they already had a room. The private investigator gave me the footage and said he would continue to follow them. But I had seen enough. I didn't need to see any more. The only thing I wanted to do now was to get out. After getting the footage, I called the lawyer the next day. We reside in New York, which is a no-fault state. I gave him the footage of my wife kissing another man and going to a hotel afterwards. He filed for divorce on my behalf, and I told him to go after everything alimony, retirement, anything I could get. As the days went by, I rarely talked to my wife. I only went back to the house to get more things when she was not home and the big stuff I put into storage. Fast forward to three weeks and my wife was served with divorce papers at her job. The only thing she communicated to me was that I wasn't getting a dime from her. I didn't respond to her statement. I was just waiting for the divorce hearing and showing the court the evidence. We went for alimony, retirement, and anything my lawyer could get. After it was all said and done, I received $1,700 per month in alimony for six years. I wasn't able to get more because of the money I was making at my job. As far as the house, we didn't own it. We were renting it. After the hearing was done, I never heard from or saw my ex-wife again. I didn't care. I was enjoying the passive income she was giving me. Her cheating cost her over $100,000. Over the six years, she will finance my next house. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, I'll see you again. Take care.